Hey, Doc Testa here, health consultant for Pine Pollen Superfoods and Train for Longevity. Today I want to talk about the differences between a water-only fast and a juice fast because they're quite different and they have different mechanisms of actions and so because of that they have different outcomes on the body. And so let's just define the two first. So water only fast, right, is exactly what it sounds like. You're going to only sustain on water. Now you can do this for 24 hours, 48 hours, 36 hours, 4 days, 5 days. I don't really recommend going past 5 days. and you got to make sure you're healthy enough to do something like this. No matter what fast you do, you know, it's important to make sure, one, that you're healthy enough, two, that you're on medications that allow your body to adapt to a fasting mode. Sometimes diabetes medications don't allow that. Certainly insulin does not allow that. And if you're taking blood pressure medications, sometimes the blood pressure, if it's elevated, regulates because you're getting healthier and your meds can make you get lightheaded. So before you go into anything like a water-only fast, make sure you're healthy enough and your meds are not contraindicated. Now, a juice fast, con contrary to this, is water and juice. Now, it could be fruit juice, it could be vegetable juice. Um, it's sort of a vague term, right? What is juice? So that's another, that's the other form of fasting that, that we're going to contrast today. And it also includes water. Now, there are these three nutrient sensing pathways in the body. They know nutrition is coming in. And when, there's, when these nutrient sensing pathways get triggered, they affect how our body deals with nutrition and whether we're actually going into a fasted mode. The first nutrient sensing uh, um, chemical in our body is insulin. And it, re uh, it, it responds to glucose or sugar. So... Fruit juice is going to trigger insulin. Now, we'll come back to that in a minute. The second nutrient sensing pathway is mTOR, uh, mammalian target of rapamycin. That also uh, is upregulated with protein, particularly animal protein, and with glucose and with insulin. So, um, that pathway is also going to get turned on with a juice fast. We'll come back to that. And then there's the AMP kinase pathway, which is actually sort of an anti-nutrient pathway, meaning that it knows when no nutrition is coming in. And that takes a few days to trigger. So insulin, fairly immediate trigger, right? When you eat something sweet, it gets turned on. mTOR, a couple days, uh, maybe 24 hours to really get triggered. And then AMP kinase, two or three days to get triggered. Now, so when you're doing a juice fast, two of these pathways are getting turned on. The insulin and the mTOR pathways are getting turned on. And mTOR and insulin are both growth pathways. And so it's still basically allowing the body to grow and build. And that's great when you're a kid, but when you're trying to um, you know, reduce and clean out and get the benefits of autophagy, that's not going to happen. It's either on or it's off. And so juice fasting isn't really, a, isn't really, I don't really consider it a fast. It might be a dietary restriction, meaning you're not eating animal protein, you're not eating dairy, and you're not eating, you know, solids, but you're still getting in a lot of glucose. You're still getting in a, a, probably a significant amount of carbohydrate, depending on what you're juicing. And so mTOR is going to be turned on and insulin are going to be turned on. So both those pathways. And so the body's never really going to get into autophagy and it's never really going to get into fat burning, the abdominal belly fat that's so toxic and unhealthy for both men and women. Um, it, the body never gets into those glu uh, fat stores because it's got nutrition coming in. Glucose is the storage molecule. So instead of going to burn fat, it's you're giving it fuel and what it doesn't burn, it's going to store in fat or in your liver or in your pancreas, depending on um, if you're overweight or obese. The downside of juice fasting also, conversely, on the other side of the coin of insulin, is glucagon. Glucagon is the hormone that moves fat out 
and, and so that it can be burned. So um, glucagon's not going to be turned on because there's not going to be a reason to burn fat. So juice fasting is a dietary restriction, but I don't really consider it fasting. Yeah, you might be able to get a little bit more alkaline. Yeah, you might feel a little bit better. Yeah, you might, I don't know, you could lose a little bit of weight due to the calorie restriction, uh, depending on what you're juicing, though. Um, so juice fasting, I don't really consider fasting. And then certainly because those two growth pathways are turned on, uh, AMP kinase, more or less the anti-nutrient sensor, um, is never going to turn on. So when that does not turn on, you don't get any autophagy. There is no cellular cleanup that's going on because that pathway has not been triggered. Again, that pathway is triggered by no nutrition. And so when that pathway gets triggered, it starts to create autophagy where the body starts looking at um, what can I consume? What can I recycle for energy? And as a middle-aged person, uh, that's what you want. You want to clean up those zombie cells, those senescent old cells, because those old cells uh, are doing no good in our body. Uh, many of them are precancerous. Uh, they definitely use and consume energy. They pump out enzymes that are detrimental to our health and are inflammatory and can even cause damage to the telomeres, the ends of DNA. So we want to get those um uh, old cells recycled. And the only way to do that is to go hungry for several days and have the body start to consume um, old cells. Now, on the flip side, with a water-only fast or with certain fasting mimicking diets, which we can talk about in another video, the body's getting no nutrition. So insulin levels never come up, right? Uh, after about four to six hours, the uh, insulin in your blood or the glucose in your blood is all utilized. Insulin levels go down. Uh, about 24 to maybe 36 hours later, all the glycogen, the stored glucose in the liver is utilized. And so, again, no glucose after that, no insulin spikes. All these things come down and they stay down. Insulin gets resensitized to glucose because it's getting a break. Your pancreas that makes insulin, the beta cells, are getting a break. And so they can rest and come back stronger. And then that sort of anti-nutrient sensing pathway, the AMP kinase, uh, an intracellular um, uh, enzyme, gets triggered. There's no nutrition. So let's recycle. And so when it starts to do that, uh, it starts the autophagy process. Now, remember I said insulin is the storage molecule, and when there's insulin and glucose around, there's no reason for its counterpart, glucagon, to mobilize fat. So when you're doing a water-only fast, glucagon gets turned on. There's no nutrition coming in. There's no, nu there's no glucose spikes. There's no insulin spikes. And look, protein does that too. Protein can convert into glucose, which will spike insulin as well. So um, that's another topic. How much protein do you do, do you need and is it really influential to diabetes or pre-diabetes or insulin resistance or obesity? A whole other topic. So when insulin and glucose and there's no protein, Glucagon gets turned on, and glucagon then after a few days starts burning belly fat and abdominal fat and that visceral fat that is so dangerous, causing inflammation, uh, releasing um, uh, aromatase, and in men converting, to, uh, uh, converting fat into estrogen and stimulating estrogen receptors. That was a whole other video I did a while back worth checking out. So water-only fasting has huge benefits. Now, when you go after after it for about four or five days, the body knows it's recycled a ton of cells. And so what it's going to do is start to release stem cells out of the bone marrow, several kinds, mesenchymal stem cells that rebuild ligament, cartilage, bone, tendon, and organs, and hemopoietic stem cells or blood stem cells. Because during the autophagy phase, a lot of white blood cells get recycled, uh, which is why maybe, 
and they're researching this, fasting may be beneficial to autoimmune conditions, which is an upregulation of the immune system and not just white blood cells, but that whole immune cascade. So, uh, so you miss out with juice fasting, you miss out on autophagy, you miss out on belly fat burning, you miss out on stem cell production. So if you're going to do a fast, if you're going to put in the effort, I would recommend a water-only fast. If you're new to this, do it for 24 hours. Get your body fat adapted. After that, do daily intermittent fasting or time-restricted feeding. When you feel like your body is really uh, burning fat efficiently, and sometimes it can take four to six weeks to get really fat adapted, then you can go to a 48-hour fast. And, you know, once you've done a couple 24 and 48 hour fasts, then you could move into a three day fast. And then, you know, once you've accomplished that, then you could move into a five day fast, water fast. Now, again, you got to be healthy enough. You got to not be taking diabetes medication or you got to be careful with blood pressure medication because with fasting, the body's actually getting healthier the the cells are becoming more sensitive and that could be thyroid cells as well if you're on thyroid medication after a few of these fasts the cells are more sensitive you might not need that medication or might not need it at the same level now breaking a fast is important less important with a juice fast because you're already bringing in nutrition but nonetheless this goes without saying for both fasts you'll want to ease into eating solid food very gently and with the especially with a longer water only fast, I recommend an equal number of days on just a plant-based diet. Um, you can sneak some, maybe some eggs in there on day three or four, but you gotta ease back into solid foods really gently. And that, that might just mean vegetable soups. That might mean salads and avocados, you know, for the first couple days. You don't wanna go too hog wild. I would suggest if you're doing a, a juice fast, uh, the same thing, but probably getting away from any uh, uh, um, fruits. Because if you've juiced a lot of fruits, you may, I'm sorry to say, but your insulin and glucose levels uh, haven't had much of a rest. And if you're going to go back to eating regular, you know, uh, plant-based food for the next few days, we should take a break and let the pancreas and insulin levels and glucose levels sort of mellow out a little bit from potentially too much juice. So I hope that's clear. Water fasting, a lot of benefits. You're not stimulating those nutrient sensing pathways. You're going to get the fat burn. You're going to get the insulin and glucose regulation. You're going to get the autophagy. And depending on how long you go, you're going to get the stem cell release. Juice fasting, on the other hand, you're going to continue to have insulin and glucose spikes, ups and downs. You're going to have those nutrient sensing pathways turned on. You're never really going to get to the hormone glucagon to burn belly fat. You're not going to get into autophagy. And look, probably in juice fasting, you're not going to even get into ketosis. So, because you're not burning fat, right? You get into ketosis from burning fat. And if you're not turning the glucagon on, you're not going to be burning fat. You're not going to be in ketosis. You might feel a little better, bit better because you've restricted solids. You've taken dairy and animal protein out of your diet. Um, but you're doing a lot of the work, but unfortunately not getting a lot of the benefit. So I hope that helps uh, clarify the two types of fasting. It's really important if you're going to do this, do it right. Get the benefit for the effort and... Um, listen to your body. All right. So Doc Testa here. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Remember, when it comes to your health, I want you to be knowledgeable and you got to be your own doctor. We'll see you in the next video.